I'm just gonna like do Superwoman and change into my next panel, which is all about play to earn gaming. Uh, thanks for being here, guys. Uh, Great so, to be here. yeah, this is a this is gonna be awesome. Like we've got seriously some of the best people in this space on this panel, so I'm very very excited about this discussion. Let's dive right in because we've got a lot to cover. Um, so this panel is called Press Play to Earn. We've got, um, so just maybe give the audience a wave when I mention your name. Uh, we've got Josephine Daco from Virtually Human Studio. They are the creators of Zed Run. We've also got Derek Lau from Guild of Guardians and Immutable X. And Mark Carnegie, who's an investor in the space. Now, um, I'll also just uh, introduce myself for anyone who wasn't on the last panel. My name's Leah Callum Butler. I'm the director of Emphasis Consulting. We specialize in blockchain and crypto, um, but we have a real knack for communications. And um, we were actually behind the play to earn mini documentary, which you can find on YouTube, which was all about the rise of NFT gaming in the Philippines. So if you haven't seen it yet, please do check it out. Um, now, today we're going to be diving into play to earn and what this space is all about. It really does seem to be the epicenter of NFT adoption, at least I think so. Um, before we do, though, just for anyone who isn't familiar, Joe, would you mind giving us, say, the 30 second elevator pitch for what is Zed Run in case anyone hasn't heard about it? Yeah, sure. Um, so Zed Run is a digital horse racing game that is built on the blockchain. Um, every racehorse is its own NFT. I think our, ter our team ter like coined the term breathable NFT uh, because they are living creatures on the blockchain. You can breathe them, you can race them. Um, they are basically, um, yeah, you can enter them into races against one another. Um, Across the ecosystem, there's 3,000 user-generated races that happen every day. Uh, there's people racing against one another right now, 24/7. So um, it's basically like real-life horse racing, but um, digital, futuristic. <laughs> it's the way of the future. Yeah. Yeah, and I think that's one of the things that people love about Zed Run is that it really, you know, if you're new to the NFT space, it's not that hard to kind of understand the idea of owning and racing and breeding a digital racehorse like just like you would in real life except these ones are digital and you guys by the way congratulations you've had incredible coverage in the likes of the new york times and the world has really jumped on board with this uh australian born innovation which is super super cool in the nft space um and also just quickly so in case anyone hasn't heard of guild of guardians derek could you just give us a quick overview of that game and how it's played yeah, of course. So Guild of Guardians is a mobile RPG and our goal is to completely disrupt the game industry. So what we're trying to do is we're building a really fun and compelling game that uses NFTs where people are able to turn their passion for gaming into assets. So the game is being published by Immutable and being developed by Stepico Games and it's set to release next year, um, early next year on iOS and Android. Sweet. And it's so cool to see how much uh, NFT gaming innovation is coming out of Australia. Um, I must admit, I'm guilty of a few years ago saying that there was no blockchain innovation coming out of Australia. I admit it. But uh, NFT gaming is getting me pretty excited uh, on the Australian front. So um, straight into our first question, I want to talk about the importance of community in play to earn because it's really a driving factor. Um, sticking with you, Derek, you know, Community is obviously hugely important um, and, you know, possibly even guilds in terms of strategies and play styles. Could you just explain like a little bit about what does community look like for Guild of Guardians and how does community drive the game? Yeah, one of the really exciting things about NFTs is that it allows the, the community to have ownership of the game. And I think that's why community is such an important part of any, any, any project that has NFTs in it. Um, so within Guild of Guardians, one of the things that we try to really do is to ensure that people have to interact with each other, um, both inside the game and outside of the game, because we believe that that's what makes the best use out of NFTs and what makes 
um, the game as fun as possible. If games are always more fun with friends than by yourself. Um, and so community absolutely is a, is a huge part of it. And we, you know, we put a lot of emphasis in engaging with our community, rewarding our community. And we also put a lot of emphasis in when we're designing the game, making sure that people are going to be interacting with, with their guild friend, guild mates, with, with other people in the game as well. Yeah, absolutely. And I think um, that that sense of shared ownership that we're getting in these player owned economies is a real um, interesting new development in terms of what participation looks like. Uh, hey, Joe, what does, you know, what does that look like for the Zed Run community? Yeah, um, it's massive. Our community is like, they just share this passion uh, for the game. It's what draws them in. Um, we're seeing more of it and we're kind of seeing more of a trend of how that's bridging different people from around the world to connect with one another. Um, it's connecting humans. Um, they're connecting to be entertained. They're learning about the game. They wanna compete against one another. Um, they're learning how to play. They like started out in Discord, you know, it just starts with one member in there. And um, now we're almost out 100,000 uh, members in Discord. Um, yeah, all from around the world. And it's just great seeing people meet like 24 seven. They're developing friendships. They're calling each other out in the community, like, hey, jump in this race, I'll meet you there. <laughs> um, they're creating content. Um, they are hosting events on their own. They're hosting their own tournaments. They do charity giveaways, uh, uh, sorry, giveaways and donate to charities. Um, organizing meetups in their local cities. So it's just, what's fascinating is just seeing the way that they're connecting online, but then also that passion that they wanna share in person, get together, um, play the game together. And so just as they're growing, it's this exponentially growing relationship. And so we're, we all grow together. Um, yeah, that, that's yeah. super interesting. And I guess, you know, up to this point, we've talked about games specifically, but, from the community element, we're already we're also seeing the rise of guilds. And Mark, I, I want to throw to you at this point because you know you're not investing in games specifically; you're investing in guilds. So you know why is that so important in the space of play to earn? I I just think the this is a societal change where what you're establishing at the moment through Axie and other things is minimum wage for the metaverse and you're engaging with the most enterprising excluded people in the world real world economy and finding them come to these groups and communities in a way that you just have not seen in a huge amount of time since you know the early days I would have said the end of the 19th and early 20th century in America you saw big chunks of people pick up and move to a new economy. And this is something that's going on at that scale at the moment. So for me, gaming um, is one thing, but what gaming is doing as a launch pad for all of these young people is absolutely extraordinary and life-changing. Yeah, we've definitely seen that here in the Philippines, um, you know, first with Axie Infinity, but also uh, other games now. And I, I want to quote you here, Mark, because we had a, an amazing chat the other night and you were talking about guilds as the best part of development economics and an instrument for human betterment, which, you know, I don't know if people have <laughs> used those kind of words to describe games before. So clearly there is a different kind of phenomenon going on here. I mean, you know, to stick with that, is it better to think about play to earn games within the context of the future of work rather than say, you know, compare them to traditional video games? And the, the M word has come up a bit now in terms of the metaverse. You know, what, what kinds of game-based jobs are we gonna see come out of this? How is this gonna change the world? I know, Joe, you were talking about some really specific roles that people are even, heaven forbid, leaving their day jobs to do specific roles in Zed Run now. Like, what, what do those jobs look like? Yeah, um, I mean, right now we're just seeing a lot of content creation. People are leveraging all of their creative skill sets to uh, create new tools, create data analytics, create, um, yeah, game theory research 
Um, and there's just so much creativity in this space. Um, content creators will probably break off into different niches of like from entertainment to racing theory. Um, and for virtually human, like this is so pivotal for us because we want to foster that environment. Um, we're going to be launching a creators fund in the coming weeks, which is going to help support and drive community initiatives. So we're just inviting all, like all creatives to come pitch their ideas, submit a proposal, it gets voted on for the opportunity to receive funding. So that's what we're doing. We want to help bring people's ideas to life. Yeah, because it's a really data-driven game, isn't it? So people are really quite diving into that space and I guess supporting others who, you know, maybe don't have those existing skill sets but still want to be able to make sense of the game in that way. Is is that kind of what it's looking like? Yeah. Um, I mean, there's there's so many things, so many opportunities to uh, create those tools. Um, we have recently opened up uh, our ZHQ in Decentraland, and we we're just thinking, you know, there's possible jobs there. You know, when we host events in the future, um, you could be a uh, guest attendant, you could be a bartender, you could be someone in the in the metaverse within the space, uh, holding down a, a role there, and that could be fun. Yeah, that's amazing. I mean, the metaverse seems to hold so many promises, but it really does feel like most people are finding it. I, I mean, it, at least in a play to earn sense, most people are finding it through video games. Mark, why do you think that is? And, you know, what does this represent if we're looking at, say, onboarding the next billion crypto users? Um, well, the truth is, I really was getting on this panel to hope you guys were going to help me with that. All I can <laughs> tell you is, as somebody who walks into markets all around the world where people don't have the money to buy a packet of cigarettes and so have to find somebody who buys the packet of cigarettes in the market and then sells them individual cigarettes. You give them the opportunity to actually end up earning currency that's not going to devalue by 50 or 80 percent in a year. Um, they spend an immense amount of time, the self-starting enterprising people find an absolutely extraordinary way and path through all of this. So I can't tell you in your world, which is the details of how the jobs are going to get created. All I can tell you is on the, you know, the 50,000 people we see on Discord, plus the ones that are on Telegram out of the former CIS, those are everything you would want if you were trying to find, found a country. Those are the spirit of enterprise. And the other part of this is you hear again and again, these are groups of people who are woven together by a sense of community. So you look at a place like America that's tearing itself apart at the moment, the amount of willingness to collaborate here is absolutely extraordinary. People are finding identity, they're finding community, and they're finding an ability to re-energize the whole creativity in the human spirit. What's not to love compared to what we're seeing in the real world that's pulling itself apart? Yeah, I couldn't agree more. Like, uh, it's interesting too, because I think crypto has always had this message of around economic empowerment and liberation, but in the context of play to earn, you could almost say that Bitcoin is like pay to play uh, because you have to have some money to be able to get in in the first place. Um, but in this space, we're actually seeing more of a way for people to be able to convert their time and their skill and their passion and energy into real monetary value. I mean, before we move on to the next space, um, which I really want to dive into that, like, you know, how much does it actually cost to get in? But Derek, from, from the play to earn perspective, what does it look like? What do jobs look like in Guild of Guardians and can people make a, a real, uh, you know, legitimate income there? Short answer is yes. And so I think, um, yeah, what we expect to see is we expect to see many different groups. So first we expect to see players who are playing to earn, playing full-time, kind of some of what Joe and Mark have touched on. We expect to see, um, people more of an investor demographic as well, who might not have as much time, but might be funding others to play and kind of sharing in those rewards. 
We also expect to see a lot on the content creator side and on the guild side as well, where there are organizations being formed um, around Guild of Guardians. We started seeing some of that already as well, uh, which is super exciting in the game. And then one other thing we expect to see as well is a lot of um, third party developers. So the benefit of having NFTs is that anyone can build on top of it. Anyone is able to build another game that uses Guild of Guardian NFTs or Zed Run NFTs or both. Um, and there's not really that much we can do to stop it as well. And so the ability for developers and creators to do this without having to also worry about that project being canceled at any point in time is also super empowering. And I think we're gonna see a lot of people if they haven't already start getting into their mindset of just kind of building something and, and adding their, their own twist to this, this metaverse. I love what you just said about like how you can't stop it because I think some people think that, you know, traditional game makers are never going to ape into play to earn because it really does decentralize ownership of the game, allowing players to become part owners in that system. And people are like, oh, why would traditional game publishers ever do that? Because it's not going to be conducive to their success. And it's like, well, I don't know. I guess Kodak said a similar kind of thing when digital photography was coming in. So <laughs> it, it really is like a totally different um, mindset in terms of how to create value if you are the creators of these these types of games. Leah, can I just can I just jump in here to say I honestly think people don't understand that this is not about gaming. This is about reimagining capitalism. If you think about capitalism in the 19th and late 18th century, you had a completely different structure to how it worked compared to now. And this idea of returning to cooperatives, but they are horizontal co cooperatives by interest group rather than vertical cooperatives, which were constrained by geography, you've got a much, much better way to understand that. And the cooperatives are going to crush the 25% of world market cap that thinks they can centralize. There's just no competition. If you talk to the guys who actually write the code for the games, yeah, all they want is the early adopters. This is a model that's gonna absolutely crush traditional gaming like a bug. Yeah, it is. It's a, a totally different way of looking at it. And I think, um, you know, anyone who's coming in new to gaming can think about it in similar ways that we've looked at decentralization's impact on other industries too. Um, and I think that's really sort of where you're coming from as well, Mark, in terms of your experience around that idea of solving collecting a collective action problems. It's difficult, but um, particularly with decentralized autonomous organizations or DAOs, as many of these games are being built as, it's a, a pretty interesting way to be able to approach those sort of problems. For sure. Anyway. <laughs> so I guess, you know, we've kind of talked about how great this is and it's amazing. We're going to change the world. But, you know, what about onboarding? Because if this is going to be the future world that we're all going to live in, I would really hope that it's going to be a lot more inclusive and accessible than our current uh, way of working and living. And aren't there like really seriously huge onboarding costs for people to get into these games? Like what, what would you say, Joe, these, these horses, they must be expensive. Yeah, well, uh, there's probably a little bit of a misconception there. I know, I know that jumping into Zed Run can be a little bit daunting uh, for people. There are barriers to entry. Uh, we are looking to solve them. Um, there's things like renting, um, lending, you know, to further explore the play to earn side. Um, in June, we partnered with Yield Guild Games, which is a play to earn gaming guild um, that brings players together from around the world through blockchain economies. So that's just helping usher in uh, more players into the space and into through NFT learning. Um, so they're helping actually bridge that gap for new players um, who are seeking to get into the game and it enables more accessibility. Um, it allows more people to experience and run um, without having to go through all of those steps that are required. 
but I think you're you're really passionate too about um, getting more women into the space too, right? Because I guess sometimes it can seem like a really male dominated space. Like, how do you see Zed Run being an on ramp for more women to get involved with NFTs? Um, I feel like they would really enjoy the angle of just being able to own something. So you're owning, um, you're getting on board to own this asset that is yours. You get to race it, you get to breed it. Um, there's there's different ways to, I guess, attract that crowd, which is through just really simple um, guides, having more women, first of all, represent and be in this space of showing our faces. So if you do work in this space, um, please put your hand up and speak out more and be present because I think that when women see other women then it, it's more inviting right and that's how you're kind of fostering and uh, ushering that in a little bit more into the community but also um, yeah just making really simple guides but for everyone not necessarily specific to women but just everyone to learn um, I mean yeah way quick ways how to set up a wallet how to how to um, transfer your fiat currency into crypto uh, just really simple steps to then get in and um, there's ways I think uh, if, we, if we just make those a little bit more simple for people um, it'll be uh, a wider uh, easier way to get mass adoption yeah, for sure. Yeah. Derek, what does it look like for Guild of Guardians? Like, uh, I guess I'm not sure exactly how much the NFTs cost to get started, but I guess being built on Immutable X also helps with reducing costs for people when they're playing the game. Like, how does how does that look for you? So first off, Guild of Guardians will be free to play. Um, so it, it is possible for someone to not pay at all and play the game. At the same time, the, we do have NFTs that people can buy. Currently, the cheapest one um, that will be sold, it starts at around $10 for a hero. And I think one other point to mention as well, or two other points to mention is, one is um, having, a, having a cost to play some of these games, which, whichever NFT game we're talking about, sometimes can also be a good thing in the sense that um, it's, it's a really good pr uh, protection against kind of bots and, and exploiters who, or people who are looking to just extract as much value as possible without adding anything to the community, without any, adding anything to the, to the game. So in, in some senses, um, it is partially positive. And then the other thing about onboarding, I think as well, is that it's not just about the cost, it's also about the experience of like, what, what is an NFT <laughs> and, 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 what, and, and why, why do you need it in games? And that whole journey of understanding, you know, what this allows people to do, what ownership is, how to create a wallet, or, or even how to you know, create a wallet for a user, all these things, I think, um, will be will be very important to making this go mainstream. Yeah, um, that's interesting too that you've got that kind of um, hybrid model where people could play for free, but they could also buy into the game. So I guess that's a nice way for them to try it out, see what it looks like, how it feels before they buy in. But as you say too, it's you know it's not just about cost being prohibitive; it's also about cost being empowering because. You have this option to be able to actually become a part owner in a game, own your own assets. And I think too, you know, in future when we start to see uh, things like interoperability between games own out, that's going to be super exciting in terms of what people can do with their in-game assets. Um, but Mark, I want to ask you, I mean, you're coming at it from that guild perspective, you know, from your perspective, how how much does it cost to recruit someone to be able to get started in a metaverse based job? They'll walk a hundred miles over a broken glass to get started. These enterprising young people on this, right? So that's not a problem. And you are self-selecting for the most resourceful. So the onboarding isn't a problem. And ultimately, whether it's YGG or us at CGU or whoever, you've essentially got the most perfect joint venture between capitalism and labor, right? Where the market clearing price for labor is going to be established, yeah, over time as we work all of this out on the metaverse. You've got ability to swap people out for jobs like capture and um, 
you know, doing surveys. So we've got a sort of structure of how the labor market works in terms of a swap between the metaverse and the real world. We know the well-established alternative jobs for them. What we haven't got is the other metaverse jobs that aren't pay to play gaming yet, because you guys who understand gaming haven't really established those. Although I'm feeling really encouraged coming out of today that there are gonna be a whole series of other jobs coming at us really, really quickly. So to me, enterprise, which is self-selecting for capitalism in its purest and best sense is really good. And then whilst capital hasn't actually discovered pay to play gaming or NFTs in any realistic sense, the alternative out there in sort of red pill tradfi is 0% on your deposits. So I think it's only gonna be a matter of time before capital comes in in much more sophisticated ways into this space. So I'm looking forward to a fantastic marriage between the two as people wake up to this opportunity. And I'd just like to say for you guys who are in it and creating the opportunity for everyone else, thank you so much for what you've been able to do at a time that is so bleak for world geopolitics and economics. Yeah, that is something beautiful about play to earn, isn't it? Um, you know, it's come out of a really dark time in the world. And I feel like this, I, all these topics that we've been talking about around community and human connection, it feels weird because like a lot of these people are behind pseudonyms. They've never met in real life but they have these incredible connections online that are forged through these um, DAOs and digital communities and play to earn games, which is something really, really beautiful at a time of huge difficulty um, in many respects. So um, we've only got about seven minutes left, but for final thoughts, um, you know, I guess, Joe, you and I were talking about that kind of idea around human connection. Like, what does it say to you about the future? Like, we've been, there's the utility of NFTs, but what does that all mean for real people? Yeah, I think, um, I think there's something deeper there where, you know, people identify with their NFTs. Um, there's a, a little sense of themselves that is represented through that, and then people connect with that. And so, um, you know, you'll see it, lots of different uh, profile pictures out there. Um, their NFT is representing them. And um, it's, it's beautiful in a way because it's creating this sense of connectivity with one another, understanding different levels of people's personalities. It's coming out, um, it's really expressive. Um, but right now, yeah, like what we're seeing with uh, a lot of projects that are based on art and collectibles. Um, I think they're just starting to look beyond NFTs um, to offer more utility. Um, I think Virtually Human, when we began, uh, we already began embracing the utility of NFTs. And so now we're looking beyond that, right? And it's that next frontier, it's exploring that next level um, and, and what they can do for people um, around the world and for entertainment, so. Yeah, for sure. I guess, you know, Mark, how would you tackle that? Because I, you know, Joe and I are obviously optimists and we love to talk about, you know, what this space is doing from, you know, a really positive perspective. But some others might say that AI is eating the world and we're actually moving towards a single player only type game where we're just going to be interacting with robots all the time. What would you say to that? Like, do we have to fear that kind of future or are we actually moving towards something different? Well, no, I'm team Derek on this, which is people just like playing with other people. So assume for a moment, I mean, this will probably be a reference that you guys don't have, but if assume you go full Blade Runner on stuff, right? So suddenly you can't work out who are the human beings and the replicants, yeah? You're trying to tell me you're not going to find some way to actually say, is this a real human being in an AI world? That you're not going to be Team Derek as opposed to Team Dystopia, where you want it to be a real person and you'll find some way to unplug from the matrix and check that it is a real human being on the other side. I just, I can't 
imagine that the essence of the human condition isn't what Derek says, which is it's just more fun to do it with your mates and do it with other people and just know, like the end of Blade Runner, that it really is a human being. That sense of, you know, that piece of origami dropping and how that collapses for you, I just can't see it. I'm completely Tim Derek on this, and that's going to be wonderful. And we know we're clearing, you know, the most enterprising people onboarding them in the metaverse for somewhere between five and 10 bucks a day. And you're trying to tell me you're not going to find some way to get people paid in this environment to be multiplayer rather than single player against AI for 10 bucks a day. I just don't buy it. Derek, what, what would you say to that? Yeah, totally agree. Uh, team Derek, right? Um, <laughs> no, it's, <laughs> Yeah, I think, you know, super, generally super excited for, for where, where the space is going. I think anyone who's here, just even listening in on this is, is super early. And I think, you know, bringing it back to the first topic of community, ultimately everyone here kind of believes in a similar thing, which is we're on, we're on the edge of disruption. We're at the beginning of this phase where ultimately this technology just empowers us to do all these different things with gaming and with everything else that you can do with NFTs as well. So I think it's super encouraging just to see so many people interested in this. And I think the opportunities is also really big as well. So there are so many opportunities to get involved, whether it's part of the community, whether it's part of these metaverse jobs, whether it's to build something, um, it's just a very exciting time uh, to come, I think. Yeah, absolutely. We're, we're almost at time. Um, I wanted to say I already liked you, Mark, but if you think that uh, I look young enough to not know Blade Runner, I like you even more. Um, <laughs> so that's a great way to end the panel. <laughs> um, this has been such a great chat, guys. Um, really appreciate you making the time. And, you know, let's continue the discussion on Twitter because I'm sure everyone's going to want to know more about your games. But also, I think uh, Mark imparted some incredible insights in terms of the power of guilds and how they're going to drive forward this space in a collective manner. So thank you again, and I look forward to chatting on Twitter. <laughs>